everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. What a lot of people miss is that really an arpeggio is just a short melody. So we only think of arpeggios as being related to the chords that we're playing them over and they are extensions and alterations and chord tones. But in fact, what you forget is that it's also just a really strong melody and that in itself makes it very useful to learn and to work on and to get into your playing because that's just gonna give you more material that you can use when you're soloing. In this video, I'm going to go over six types of three note arpeggios. And you wanna have three note arpeggios in your vocabulary because they're pretty practical. They're easy to practice because they're easy to move around scales. You have a good overview of only three notes. And of course, a three note structure is also fairly easy to insert into a solo line and to connect with all the other things that you're already playing. To give you an idea about how these arpeggios sound and how they work when you're using them, I have a short solo on an A minor blues, and then I'm going to analyze that solo and talk about the different arpeggios as we come across them in the solo. Jazz guitar, improve the way that you solo, check out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. In the first phrase of the solo on the A minor chord, I'm using a Dorian sound, and the phrase really just consists of some basic diatonic triads out of that scale. So in this case, I'm starting with the A minor triad. Then I'm going on to a D major triad, so the triad that's found on the fourth degree of the Dorian scale. So that's this one. I'm playing it in a pattern, so I'm starting on the third, and then playing the ascending triad. And then the final three notes are in fact an E minor triad, so which is a first inversion E minor triad, but I'm playing it, playing the notes in a different order, or I'm playing the triad in a pattern. Now triads are probably the most important three note structure that we have. And of course, if you want to talk about three note arpeggios, that is really where you want to start. You cannot know enough about triads or check out enough uh, about using them in your solos. And I think whatever chord you're playing over, if you know what the chord is, and if you have an idea about what scales you use, it always makes sense to just go over the diatonic triads and see what they might be uh, in this specific situation in a song where it might work in some way that you're not aware of because of the context. The diatonic triads, in this case from A, would be this. If we look at the inversions, then you can also work them through the scale. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to show you how to do that, where I'm using so, two strings, and then I'm playing the second inversion triads through the scale. That would be this. Next phrase starts with really emphasizing the 13th on the A minor, so that's the F sharp, so and really spelling out so the, the A minor Dorian sound with the 7th and the 13th. From here it moves on to a melody that's using an A minor pentatonic scale, so and then it moves into some chordal harmony and some chordal arpeggios. The first one is from C, so C, F sharp and B, which is really spelling out a minor 6 9 and then this is moving on into the next bar where we have an A7 altered which is of course the same as uh, B flat melodic minor and here we can take this arpeggio and then just shift it up and play the same arpeggio so that's what I'm doing here but I'm playing a different pattern because I'm starting with the top note so and then skipping down and playing the ascending arpeggio and then I'm moving that structure so I take another chordal arpeggio that's a step under it it's this one from C, so C, F, and B flat. And then I'm playing that in the same way, so. So we have. And then I'm going into an E flat seven arpeggio in the second inversion. And resolving that to the A on D minor. And then adding a, a nine to an E after that. Here I'm using chordal arpeggios. And 
quartal arpeggios, and that sound is usually something that's associated more with modern jazz. It's also closely connected to using pentatonic scales and superimposing pentatonic scales onto chords. Uh, if you want to work on quartal arpeggios and take those to the scale, you can do that on the middle string set, and that could be something like this. And notice that here I'm playing it, and actually I did the same with, uh, with the triads. I tend to play these one note per string and then really just play alternate picking. And this is of course a little bit difficult if you're more used to making some sort of combination of uh, directions and use economy picking, you can do that as well. Uh, but it's also extremely good for your phrasing to just be able to take all these one note per string figures and play them with alternate picking. So that's kind of a bonus for practicing these uh, three note arpeggio structures. The next phrase on the D minor chord is using some shell voicings. So you probably already know shell voicings as chords like this, some stuff that you use a lot for playing sort of like Freddie Green or um, uh, also for Latin music like. They're very useful, but they also make for really great arpeggios. In this case, I'm using one from F, so which is the F, the root, then the third, and then the seventh E. And I'm playing it on D minor, so that means that in fact, I'm playing the third of the D minor, the fifth, and then the ninth. From there, I'm going into a D minor seven shell voicing, so. And then a descending D minor triad. That takes me to the E on the A minor. And the way I'm playing this uh, actually is using groups of four triplets, which is a nice way to break up the triplet flow, because this whole song is, of course, in a triplet groove. So everything is sort of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But if I take, instead of playing all, all the time these uh, three note groupings and then start playing four note groupings, then it's moving in sort of a nice way on top of the groove. And it's also coming back uh, once every bar, which is sort of easy to handle and it's not gonna get really complicated rhythmically. So that's always something you wanna check out uh, if you're playing in triple grooves like this to just be able to switch between making four note groupings and three note groupings. A way to practice these shell voicings could be to just take, again, a string set and then just move them through the scale. So in this case, I'm just going to take the D minor Dorian sound because that's where I'm using it in the solo. So that would be this exercise. Now that we're back on the A minor chord, we get a phrase that introduces two new three note arpeggio types. The first one is a quintal arpeggio. So a quintal arpeggio is a stack of uh, fifth intervals. And uh, I'm playing it over the A minor, I'm playing from the third, so that means there's first a C, then a fifth up a G, and then another fifth up that's a D. And that's actually giving me sort of, sort of an A minor 11 sound. And then from there we get an E minor triad in the second version. And then I move into another type of uh, triad that I didn't include in the beginning because it's sort of a different kind of sound and that's a sus4 triad. So in this case I'm first playing an E sus4 and then a D sus4 and then I'm ending the phrase on an E. A simple way of practicing the quintal arpeggios is just to play them up through the scale on the neck like this. But you can also work on them in the context of a song, uh, because especially the police are kind of famous for using them. Uh, so that could, could be uh, something like playing Message in a Bottle. A similar idea to work on the sus4 triads, and here I think it makes more sense to use a set of two strings than a set of three, uh, mainly because we just have that second interval in there, would be to do this exercise. The most common sound with the sus4 triads is probably this one, which is also what you hear in, um, I forget which song it is, there is one Kurt Rosenberg song where he's really using a sus4 as an intro, so something like this, I'm not sure how it goes actually, but that's one sound, but there are actually two other types of sus4 triads that are really useful to check out as well. Uh, one is the Lydian sus4 song, and also the other one is the diminished sus4, which is then the the triad that kind of makes up the melody of uh, Inner Urge by Joe Henderson. And then 
actually that moves into the next one, so which is the Lydian, but then from F. The reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that I have a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. I'm very grateful for their support, and it's because of them that I can keep on making all these jazz improvisation and jazz guitar videos. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page, and if you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. On the cadence in bar 9 and 10, which in a minor blues, in A will be F7 to E7, I'm first using some spread voice triads on the F7, so first an F major triad, followed by a first inversion G major triad, but again also the, the spread version of it. And then on the E7 altered, I'm first playing an F minor triad, and then a C major triad, and then essentially just a scale one down to the fifth of A minor. Spread triads are still just the triads, they're the same notes, but we've turned them into another interval structure that has a lot of large intervals. So if we take the first triad, so this F major triad, the way this is constructed is essentially it's a drop two version of a second inversion F major triad. So we have this F major triad, and then I'm gonna make, turn it into a drop two version of this. That means that I'm taking the second highest note, that's the F, and taking that down an octave to this note, and then I have, which is what I'm using here. So essentially the spread triads are drop two versions of the close voice triads, and we can of course make one for each of the, of the inversions that we have by just taking the middle note and then taking that down an octave. And they're really useful for a lot of solo ideas, and they're also a very nice way to get some larger intervals into your playing because the melody is still a triad, it's still a pretty strong melody, and, and it's therefore it's a lot easier to make uh, some strong lines with. Practicing spread voice triads is extremely good for your right hand technique because it does involve like a lot of changing strings and a lot of skipping strings as well. So if you work on this, it's really going to open up your right hand technique and get you a lot more precise when it comes to moving around from string to string. In this case, I'm using the spread voice triads on an F7, and the F7 is really just a tritone dominant that's taking us to the E7, which is of course the dominant of the key. And the F7 is therefore a Lydian dominant, and that means that the scale that I'm using on it is a C melodic minor scale. And uh, if we take the spread voice triads through that scale, that sounds like this. The final phrase in the solo is really using a variation of a triad, but it is also one that most of us don't really uh, practice as a triad and as an arpeggio, even though we're using it really a lot, especially as a chord voicing. And that's the major flat five triad. So you may say, well, I'm, I've never heard of that, I don't use it. But in fact, if you're playing a D7 with a nine without the root, so essentially this voicing, but then without the D, then you're playing this. And in fact, that's a C major flat five. So this is a C major triad, and that's a C major flat five triad. So you're probably using a lot, you're probably using this one for a D7, because that's an inversion of it as well. And that makes it really worthwhile checking out. And here I'm using it also because it's really a nice way to get the 13 in there. Even though here I'm using it in what later appears to be like a melodic minor context. So I'm really just starting with this, which is just a pattern of that uh, major flat five triad. And then I'm using A melodic minor at this point in the solo on the A minor. And that means that I can actually move up a whole step and then play the same uh, type of triad, so a D major flat five triad, because that's in that scale as well. And the pattern that I'm playing is in fact a group of five notes, because I'm playing four notes, resting one, and then playing another four notes. So I'm playing groups of five, so triplets in groups of five, and then resolving that in the middle of the next bar with a B and a G sharp to just still stay in the sort of A melodic minor sound. And a way to practice this is to just take this group of notes, so C, E, and F sharp, and then move that through the scale. And in this case, I'm doing that with an A melodic minor scale because that's how I'm using it in the solo.
it's always interesting to check out what happens once you start moving some sort of structure through a scale. In this case, uh, we're moving this major flat five triad, which is already quite a different sound than, than what we normally have with the triad through the scale. And it's giving us, especially like this one, it's a bit strange for, for something, not something that we really connect with the triad. And neither is the one on F sharp or the one, especially the one on G sharp, which is of course also sort of the altered scale degree in, in the scale. I think it's still worthwhile to do exercises like this because sometimes you're going to come across things that you can use uh, by moving it. For instance, with the SOS4 triads, we had the sort of the Lydian SOS4 triad and also the diminished SOS4 triads, which are both really sort of strong ideas, the strong melodies that we can use. And they may be SOS4 triads, but we don't really, we wouldn't think of them as SOS4 triads because we kind of logged into that they always sound like and are maybe more related to quarter harmony. If you want to check out some phrases from one of the people who really use these triads a lot, then check out this video where I'm analyzing a few phrases from a Kurt Rosenwinkel solo. If this is the first time you see one of my videos and you want to learn more about jazz guitar, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. And that's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.